נו, אסף, באמת, נראה לך שזה מה שהם היו כותבים? תרד מהבעיים מהר. תראי, אין לי ספק שמישהו מהבעיים לא ישב וגזר גזרי עיתונים, כי זה סרט שהוא ראה ב... אני לא יודע מה... אוקיי. אז אין לי ספק שהם לא עשו את זה. אז מי... אז אני נשאר עדיין עם אי הידיעה, מי שם את זה אצלי בתיבה? זה הכל. אז אתה אומר שזה אמיתי. אני הייתי לוקח את זה למשטרה בכל מקרה. למשטרה? אתה רוצה לבוא עם זה למשטרה? אתה, כאילו, אתה נורא סוט... אני לא, לא, לא עוקבת אחריך, בוא נעשה את זה לאט. שנייה, כן. אוקיי? מצד אחד אתה אומר, זה איזה ג'וק, פרקטיקל ג'וק של אחד מהחברים שלך, אולי. אתה הלכת אליהם, אף אחד לא זה. אתה אומר, זה לא הבעיים. אז מי רוצה, מי מעניין אותו ויודע? את, איתי... יפה, אז זה אני. אז אני לא כאילו, אני אופציה. Now I know that there is no I in we. I never imagined that what started as a beautiful friendship would end up when Asaf will turn his suspicious mind on me too. Yet, there was one last thing we had to do as a we. We drove in silence up the Carmel Mountain in Haifa. We were passing the point where Asaf first captivated me with a beautiful story about an underground city that lies beneath the Baha'i Gardens. Three years we've been waiting for this moment. The gates we've seen closed so many times before were finally opening up for us. We were about to walk the grounds where Bawala had his vision for world peace. We stepped into the headquarters of the Baha'i Faith, the fourth monotheistic religion of five million believers worldwide. Our Baha'i escort was holding the master key to all the places we so craved to see and never able to on the guided tours we took so many times before. We were passing the archive building which was built as an exact replica of the Parthenon in Greece, the ultimate symbol of democracy. The Baha'i Faith is the The first religion in the history of the world, as far as I'm aware, to uh, function without a clergy and on a democratic basis. While inhaling the clear air and the feeling of democracy, we thought about this young religion, which originated in Iran and out of all the places in the world, ended up building this Capitol Hill in our backyard. Baha'is believe that where we're at right now is in an age of transition where we're moving from that society based on nation states to a global society, a society based on a global identity. Nations will eventually give up some of their sovereignty and turn it over to a world government. The Baha'i World Center was overlooking some glorious future and we were about to discover what lies beneath this commanding hill. Three years ago, Asaf informed me he's taking us on a trip to the Baha'i Gardens. I was excited, but little did I know that he meant sitting outside the gates in a cheap surveillance car, counting the cars that entered the garden gates. While wondering about what I was doing there, Asaf told me his life story growing up on Marcus Street, next to the Baha'i Gardens. 
From his bedroom window, he used to stare at the obelisk that marks the place where the Baha'i will one day build a world temple. Around the time of his bar mitzvah, just when he was hitting puberty, the Baha'i started a 14-year renovation of the gardens, digging the mountain and building an underground city. All this time he failed to get in, made him anxious and determined. Asaf continued his story how on May 2001, the gardens opened to the public, and as a 28-year-old man armed with a camera, he was among the first to go in. Thank <laughs> After a few hours of sitting in the car without air condition, Asaf finally made his point. He has to become a Baha'i in order to go under the gardens. Since Asaf insisted on staying undercover, I suggested he call a Baha'i center outside of Israel. Without noticing, I was pulled into a Saf's adventure. Good morning. Uh, I, I would like to become a Baha'i and I was wondering if there's someone I could talk to that could uh, direct me or, or guide me in some way. Okay, can I ask you something? Can you write to us an email? Write to you an email? Just to say to us that you want to be a Baha'i and we will see if we can give you an interview. Ten days later, the Baha'i World Center in Haifa scheduled a meeting with Asaf at his Tel Aviv apartment with a Mr. Smith. Alarmed by the response of the Baha'is, Asaf wanted to make sure that no matter what happens, it will be documented. <laughs> He decided to install cameras and microphones throughout the apartment. This was the chair he intended for Mr. Smith. Mr. Shafia? Hi, how are you? Very Smith. I'm a bit earlier, that's all right. It's fine. Thanks. Asaf's email must have left a big impression on the Baha'is, since Mr. Smith was 20 minutes early. For the first time, Asaf realized that Mr. Smith was not just a code name. Having the Deputy Secretary General of the Baha'i World Center in his living room, Asaf was confident that becoming a Baha'i member was just a secret handshake away. If you're in Israel, the first law to you have to abide by is the fact that there's no community you can join. Sorry. 
<laughs> and who came up with that rule? This is Baha'u'llah himself, the Prophet. But in many ways, I think you know, if I was an Israeli and I had this explained to me, and of course I'm not, so you know, forgive me for even uh, saying it, but if I was, the way I think I would look at it is that, well, you know, there's, there must be some special bounty involved here. Because obviously a prophet comes with a message for the world, a message like world peace. I mean, what could be more important? Uh, and yet this part of the world is prevented from being part of that community. There has to be a very good reason. There has to be a very good reason. There has to be. Yeah. I mean, and so it's like, you know, a privilege to actually be part of a specially chosen place. The world centre of the Baha'i faith is here. I mean, it's never going to move. It's going to be in Haifa forever. And uh, the Israeli community is in fact doing what I think is an incredible job of defending us. Because we don't actually believe that peace can be achieved through military means. Mm -hmm. It's like you know protecting a jewel, but this jewel at the moment on on Mount Carmel in Haifa isn't really yet ready for exposure to the whole of the light of day of the world. Mm. When that point is reached, then I think the rules here will change. <laughs> was seen as sincerely motivated means that I have been given permission to talk to you quite openly. But I will not do it with uh, just anybody. Asaf was disappointed. His attempt to go under the Baha'i Gardens as a Baha'i failed. Going over the tapes, I couldn't figure out why Mr. Mary Smith, the Deputy Secretary General of the Baha'i World Center, came all the way to Tel Aviv on a Friday afternoon just to say no. After all those years of being a closet private investigator, it was time to come out. I officially decided to join Asaf on his mission. The success of any good mission depends on getting all the facts. I found the only book written in Hebrew about the Baha'i faith. What caught my attention was the family feud that started some 80 years ago between the two sons of the prophet Bawala over the control of the faith. The dispute ended with part of the family expelled. It occurred to us that this young religion must have some living descendants walking among us. Calling the author of the book to find the family of the Prophet should be a good start. Okay. האם כאילו אתה יודע איפה אפשר למצוא את השערי בשר של הנביא? אין יותר. אבל זו דת נורא צעירה, לא יכול להיות שאין יותר, או שאתה אומר... אני לא מכיר אף אחד. I'm the great granddaughter of Baha'u'llah, from both sides, from my both, from my father's side and from my mother's side. because uh, my uh, parents were first cousins. My grandparents were living here. This house was full of, you know, grandparents and the children and this. So I was listening and I had big ears. <laughs> this is the family tree from Tehran. It was given to me in 77 when I was there by the family. And down here somewhere. This one? Here, here, here. This is myself, two years old. Who is this? This is Abbas Afendi when he was young. Really? Yeah, he's very good looking. He was very good looking. And this is? This is my grandfather, Muhammad Ali, the brother of Abbas Afendi. Your grandfather? The younger, yeah. And my your... grandfather. You read something? Uh, where? By uh, Hebrew University? No. 
Speaking of Hebrew University. Yeah, so I know. Professor. Yes, Moshe Sharon. He says we are not family. I think I'll better type, send him a letter to say we are family. <laughs> Why would the person that is not a Baha'i would say something like that? Well, he is the one that uh, made the first uh, chair of the Baha'i studies, isn't it? Maybe he's being uh, misinformed. He uh, doesn't even know. There is still a living soul. Yes, yes, maybe. This is an interesting picture. I'll open for you. This is my grandfather Muhammad Ali, my buddy Allah, and the four sons, of course. You know, the sons are important. So there they are all standing behind, the heirs. <laughs> it's a lovely picture, I think. Which one is your father? My father is the tall one. We are the family, and they cannot say that we are not the family, as they tell their uh, people that come from abroad. Do not talk to them. That, but... Uh, I think it's personally, I think it's very childish because we can, what are they so afraid of us for? What can we do against all, the, we, we are not interested. We are the family that are living here. The blood of Baha'u'llah runs in all the veins of the family. We are not doing anything against them. We are just living peacefully and doing exactly what Baha'u'llah told us to do. So we are Baha'is. We are true Baha'is. Young fellows, better fellows. When the time came to ask the Baha'is about the relatives of the Bawala, we thought of Nigar, the great granddaughter of the founder prophet and an outcast from the Baha'i faith. Being Jews, we would love to have known the great granddaughter of Moses. I don't think for that for most Baha'is that uh, the personalities are, are that important. I think for most Baha'is their loyalty is to the administrative institutions of the faith. And I think maybe, yeah, maybe it might be interesting, but I, I don't know that it would necessarily involve a, a big kind of a spiritual process or something that would be of value in and of itself because of being related to Baha'u'llah. In, in every organization, particularly religious organizations, there is always some form of dealing with uh, harmful dissidents. That uh, certainly exists in the Catholic Church and in other religious organizations. Within the context of the Baha'i Faith, those who uh, attack the authority of the institutions, uh, which are there to maintain the unity of the community, are uh, expelled from the community and the community is asked not to uh, not to speak with them uh, and this is because disputes are forbidden in the community and on such a fundamental issue uh, the, the best way to avoid a dispute is simply not to have a conversation Discovering the great granddaughter of Bawala did not bring us closer to finding what lies beneath the Baha'i Gardens. We needed to get back on track and focus on our mission. Our next step was to get the architectural plans of the gardens. We expected lack of cooperation from Haifa municipality, but it was easier than stealing a candy from a baby. We approached an architect in Tel Aviv who never saw the plans before and asked him to read it for us. תשמעי, מה שהבן אדם רואה זה מה שיש מעל הקרקע. אנחנו תכף נגיע למה שיש מתחת לקרקע. אנחנו כרגע מחזיקים פה את התוכנית, וואו, משהו, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, כן, 5 וחצי, 6 קומות באדמה. זה כבר מעל האדמה, הנה. זה, 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 זה. אבל אולם המועצה הוא מתחת לאדמה. סליחה, אולם הכנסים, זה אולם כנסים. לא, אני רוצה לראות את התוכנית שלי. לא, אני רוצה כבר להיות באמת כמו 
היחידה. הנה זה העולם, זה 200 איש ב-250 איש אפילו. הנה תעלות עיבור, מכונות, 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 הכל מכונות. חדר אוכל, וואלה, יפה. חדרי הקרנה, תסתכלו! אזור משחקים לילדים, מתחת לאדמה. תחזוקה, רופא. וואו. כל זה משרת את הליבה. אם זה המבנה, זה הליבה. מה זה אומר? זה אומר בונקר. זה אומר בונקר. מוקלט אטומי, בטוח. לא, אני רואה את זה כבר, זה לגמרי ברור לי. תראה, אני עושה לי קונספירציות, כי אני דבר כזה עוד לא ראיתי בחיים שלי. זה כל מיני, אני יודע, מועצת החכמים שתשרוד בעולם. אחרי השואה האקולוגית או האחרת. מה זה תיבת נוח? תיבת נוח זה הבונקר הראשון, שאני מכיר לפחות. זה פשוט, על זה לא ידעתי. את היית בפנים? לא. אני לא חושב שהם ייתנו למישהו להיכנס. might be a bunker. We were not willing to give up on the idea to go down there. Not us, not now. There must be people who have worked on building the place. Finding one was our next mission. One of our sources persisted on meeting us at the Jerusalem main bus terminal, where he handed us a list of people who worked for the Baha'is. <laughs> מי שאסף אותי שם מתנצל אפילו על זה שהוא איחר בכמה דקות, הוא דיבר איתי על כך שהוא מצפה שאני או ממשיכי דרכי יוכלו להמשיך לעבוד איתם לאורך 500 השנה הקרובה. מי שליווה אותי הכיר מצוין את המקום ופשוט לקח אותי דרך מבוך, אפשר לומר כמעט. של מקלטים תת-קרקעיים. אני עבדתי בתוך אולם uh, תת-קרקעי, אודיטוריום, uh, state of the art, מה שנקרא. זאת אומרת שהמילה האחרונה בעיצוב ובאיכות של גימור. כשניסיתי לצאת מהאולם, אז הייתה שם רק דלת אחת שהובילה לשר... למסדרון, שבסופו היו השירותים, וכל שאר הדלתות היו נעולות. זו תחושה של סודיות ושל uh, uh, צפייה מתמדת. אתה נצפה, או אתה חש נצפה. הדבר הכי קרוב שזה מזכיר לי זה משרד הנהלה של בנק גדול, של חברת הייטק גדולה, או של ארגון כמו, כמו ממשלתי, או כמו של ארגון שליטה צבאי, ברמה של... אם הייתי מגיע אי פעם לכזה מקום, כמו הבור של המטכ"ל. שאני מעולם לא הייתי שם ואני גם לא מתכונן אם לא יאלצו אותי. There are two ways of entering a place. One is politely knocking on the front door. The other is trying the window. I guess that back then I was infatuated with the idea of the forbidden underground city. and I let Asaf convince me to try the window. Instead of approaching the Baha'is directly, we joined yet another magical tour at the gardens. Maybe we could find some loopholes in this facility. Walking downhill, what stood out is the only religious building on site, the Shrine of the Bab. From the architectural plans, we knew of four main buildings, but could only notice three of them. The International Teaching Center, the Universal House of Justice, and the Archive Building. We were unable to see the library. From where they let us stand, there were no loopholes in sight, but only an army of gardeners.
это бахаем лошадь им алкоголь, но машним, машним вы, но плачим сами. Вы гем, рацим рак шалом, гем ло мештатфим ба иргуним, гем, иргуним шель нам шельтиим. We were happy to find out that the Baha'i is a group that aspires for world peace and does not involve itself in government and politics. But all we could see was a place that resembled the Capitol Hill of some Western government we know. אז אה, אתם נותנים לך כלי נשק כדי ש... ואנחנו בתור ישראלים מאמינים גדולים בכלי נשק, אז יש את Our last visit to the Baha'i Gardens left us with the need to find out more about Baha'is and peace. We were surprised to read about Dr. David Kelly's suicide affair. Kelly was an MI6 agent and a weapons inspector. He was converted to the Baha'i faith by Mike Patterson, a Baha'i who was a CIA agent and his translator in Iraq. He didn't fit to what we knew about Baha'i faith and its non-involvement in military and politics. The British government appointed Lord Hutton to investigate the circumstances of Kelly's death. In the Hutton Inquiry report, we found the testimony of the head of the Baha'i community in the UK. It seemed very strange to us that the Baha'i representative was invited to testify in the inquiry. We decided to look into it. Our investigation took yet another detour. We left the comfort of our backyard and went international. On a typical summer day in Edinburgh, we started our UK mission. We were standing at Charlotte Square, the place where Abdul Baha, the successor of Bawala, made his first public appearance, spreading the vision of the Baha'i faith to the West in 1912. We contacted a British intelligence analyst and brought him the Hutton report to read between the lines. chose to meet us off Charlotte Square in a small hotel, which used the kilt as an interior design choice. Dr. Kelly was a virologist. He'd worked at Port and Down, the secret British chemical weapons research establishment. He'd done tours of duty um, over a number of years as a UN weapons inspector in Iraq. He'd made as many as 40 trips to Iraq. It has been said information is power. Now the situation in the Middle East, in particular in Iraq, in 1999 onwards, was dire. The only source, the only real source of concise human intelligence, human it's called, were the UN weapons inspectors. The question of David Kelly and the faith of Baha'i is increasingly interesting. Uniquely at the Hutton Inquiry, the Secretary of the Baha'i Assemblies in Great Britain gave evidence. There was also a written submission by the Baha'i faith in Britain which was not published. Specifically, it was kept private. The fourth entry on the evidence register is Baha'i faith not for release, submission to the inquiry. So to this day, we don't know what was in that submission. Barney Leith, the secretary of the Baha'i National Assembly of the UK, was the only one who could tell us what was written in that unpublished submission to the inquiry. Our appointment with Mr. Leith was scheduled for the next day. London was 10 hours away, 
and there was no time to make any navigation mistakes. Time was of the essence. We were about to turn in when we got a call from our people in Israel saying that the rules for the interview are now changed. I don't know how we can be able to get out of here. Barney Leaf demands in his email a list of questions and 48 hours to prepare. After consulting with our people, we offered Mr. Leaf a five-minute uncut statement, and he agreed to it. You're welcome to give us the uh, five-minute version that addresses the question that we raised. And the alternative is? Well, I'm willing to uh, have a full-length interview. You know, I think it's important to understand that as a community we have nothing to hide. <coughs> Since the Baha'is had nothing to hide, Mr. Leith decided to do the full-length interview. Are you ready? <coughs> Are you ready? Sure. Uh, <laughs> as ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> okay. So it's uh, three, two, one. Dr. Kelly was a, a government scientist. He, uh, he was actually an eminent uh, microbiologist before he started working for the government. And he was, he was a, yes, he was an active part of the Baha'i community where I live, um, near where he lived, in Oxfordshire in England. And uh, he... Of course, most of us had no idea, or maybe none of us had any idea of what he was doing, because he was also a very private man, and he used to keep the different parts of his uh, life, as it were, quite rather separate from each other. I mean, he did give a lecture about his work uh, on in the inspect uh, weapons inspection in Iraq, um, and that was really the first time that we learned about his, his work. There was a, a testimony that you had in writing and uh, was never published to the public. It said I was asked to submit um, the heads, the headlines, as it were, of what I would say in testimony. But why would it remain uh, unseen to the public? Is, I don't think there's any significance in that at all. I mean, what I said, as you know, was published on the Hutton Inquiry website the same day. It was on, you know, it was reported on the television, on the TV news and in the newspapers. Uh, it was scarcely a secret, but there was literally no difference between what I wrote and what I said. We did not uncover the information that was submitted to the Hutton Inquiry by the Baha'i Faith. We needed to take some desperate measures and put some money into our investigation. So we rented a Mercedes. We made contact with an investigative journalist who also gave evidence at the Hatton Inquiry. What do you think uh, Barney Leith could have uh, stated in an undisclosed uh, to public uh, material? I suspect and I'm talking off the top of my head, it would be something to do with the relationship with Mike Peterson. Somebody who is a bilingual translator, like Mike Peterson, is almost ipso facto an intelligence officer. And the problem was that David uh, fell for her. And then suddenly, you know, it's not a, a, any longer a formal relationship. You know, she's a bit more than just the translator. You think that the whole conversion thing was a matter of... Uh falling for a certain Miss Pedersen? I don't think David would have adopted the Baha'i faith without the relationship with Mike Peterson. I think it was a, a coincidence of interests and events. We googled Miss Pedersen and found out that she lived in the US. Something else that caught our attention was an appeal by the American Frederick Glacier to study the connection between Kelly Pedersen and the Baha'i Faith. The appeal was to investigators and journalists. Since we thought of ourselves as investigators and journalists, it was right up our alley.
before leaving the UK and going to the US, we paid a visit to the grave of David Kelly. If only these stones could talk. Celebrate the greatest show on two wheels with an evening of Latour inspired entertainment. If you win a stage at the Tour de France, it will change your life forever, you know. See just how far our riders have come on their quest to crack a European dominated sport. The Aussies don't take being pushed around. Aussie onslaught at 10.20. Then the glorious animated feature Belleville Rendezvous. Viva Latour with SBS from 10.20 Thursday night. smooth, rich taste of original Cadbury Old Gold Dark Chocolate is a proud supporter of SBS. Express Courier International delivers to 261 million places around the world. Signature on delivery in 200 countries, online tracking in over 160 of those. All for one business, yours. Call us today or visit our website. Quit smoking, and this is what you're up against. Smoking increases the number of receptors in your brain that thrive on nicotine. Take their supply away, they go mad. They won't let you break the habit without a fight. The therapeutic nicotine and nicotine patches, lozenges and gum reduces nicotine cravings so you can wean the beasts off gradually and help give your willpower a fighting chance to do the rest. After many hours of flying, we landed in the U.S. and headed to meet Frederick Glacier. Even though he agreed to the meeting, he had several conditions. To meet in a public place, to record the interview with his own camera, to bring his own witness, and that we sign a contract stating we are not Baha'is or sent by the Baha'i World Center in Haifa. My wonder is why was it important to you to know that we are not Baha'is in any way or representative of uh, UHJ? I've been a Baha'i since 1976. I've seen many, many incidents throughout that time prior to the upheavals even on the internet of things not being what w appears to be. Now, with David Kelly, there are enormous and, and profound questions of the Baha'i administration involvement there that have not been researched or covered in any satisfying way, to my mind. Was, Do was Ke Kelly really revealing classified information to the Baha'i community? Was he being used by the Baha'i community? Was he a ploy in that? Then enters Mai Peterson, an American spy who's apparently a Kuwaiti in the, in the military and uh, uh, that whole scenario. She's been very uh, hushed up. Uh, she was apparently played such an important role in his life and yet uh, was never really questioned and um, uh, scrutinized about any possible uh, involvement in his death. Uh, also, her testimony was never heard by Lord Hutton. She refused to pass her testimony on, and uh, that's a most disquieting fact. While wrapping up his camera equipment, Glacier asked us not to film his car leaving the hotel. Driving to Monterey, Pedersen's last residence, according to the papers, it came to us that we were deep into the world of espionage. Having got all our knowledge about spying from B-movies we watched over the years, we were shocked to discover we will not be able to infiltrate Mike Pedersen's last workplace, better known as the U.S. government spy school. We decided to get friendly with Pedersen's Baha'i community members. Maybe it will lead us to her address. Karen, do you know anything about the Baha'i Center? The Chamber of Commerce most likely knows about Yeah, that. that's true. That's yeah. true. But let's just. Monitor, this is Senator Kim speaking. Hey. Hi. 
Call for information. We have mastered the art of spying to the highest level. We only use payphones and never the same one twice. This is the information number for the Baha'i faith in northern Monterey County. The quarter we invested paid off. We got the number of the secretary of the Baha'i Center in Monterey County. We were one step closer to finding Miss Pedersen. Okay. This was my first pilgrimage to Haifa, Israel in uh, 1982. That, of course, is the uh, Universal House of Justice. They were just building that when I was there that time. This is the obelisk on the top of Mount Carmel, where eventually we will build a temple. You know when that's going to happen? As soon as we get enough Baha'is to get enough money together. <laughs> It always comes down to money, doesn't it? No. I don't think I need those. Uh, May Pedersen. Pedersen. Yes, uh, well, she really wasn't a member of our community, although she got, I got her name on my last list that came from National, and she has moved to Arizona. Oh. Behind National Center. My Pedersen's address was just a phone call away. We needed someone to make that call to the International Spiritual Assembly of the U.S., and Laverne agreed to do it. May Pedersen. Yeah, Pedersen. Okay, now I found her. She, according to our list, she's in... Who am I speaking to first? Oh, this is uh, Laverne Vaughn, uh, the corresponding secretary for the Salinas community. Uh, would you please give me your own Baha'i ID? My Baha'i ID number is 000-3414. Why do you need to know where she is? I am being uh, filmed here on from Israel with the Israelis uh, on the Baha'i faith, and they want to know May Peterson's uh, phone number or address is. Can you give that to this young lady here? I, I can. I can. You know, um, I can't give her her phone number. I can't give nothing. I'm glad to know National is awful protective of us, but <laughs> that does make it hard. Uh, there is one person that you might really want to interview, or people, is the Von Bergs in Monterey. There's the Von Bergs. Ah, here is oh, the... Oh, there's my, May Pedersen. We wrote down My Pedersen's last home address and left. Since our effort to keep a low profile was compromised, we needed to act quickly. We drove to the Von Bergs, who lived only 15 miles away. Somehow, their name sounded familiar. I became a Baha'i in 1975. Five years later, I dragged it along. It was very good for us and recommended. It's good therapy for anybody. Does May Pedersen still uh, belong to this community? No, 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 she lives back east now. You're not in touch with her? Or are you? Yes, uh, to, I mean, she'll call one person or another and we trade information. <laughs> we just found out she was married. She was very good in Arabic. And uh, that's how she met David Kelly, if you're thinking about David Kelly. Uh, David became a Baha'i in our house. Really? Uh -huh. She's been here many, many, many times. But, uh, I, I mean, they never talked about what they did, but uh, I assume she was his translator in Iraq. Now starting to connect some things that I've read. She made a phone call to you after the uh, suicide of Mr. Kelly? We don't know it was suicide. Uh, yeah, that's true. Um, that's uh, what I read in the paper. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, we were. We had a group here, and we were studying uh, the Baha'i writings on life after death. And the telephone rang, and it was Maya, and she said, "David's dead." Um, he said, and "Also, don't believe everything you read in the newspapers." They didn't know who to blame that war on. Depending on who you talk to. Yeah, we better be uh, a little careful here. I don't know. I wanted to ask you one more question. You said earlier that um, 
I don't know why it was only then that we realized that chasing a CIA agent and a dead scientist is a tad beyond our outstanding detective skills. We drove to Mike Pedersen's last known address. The clown on what used to be her door assured us that we will never comprehend the coincidence of interest and events that brought together these two spies to join a world peace religion. Well, I, I don't uh, know sort of the whole process of how uh, Dr. Kelly ended up where he did. Uh, he was a scientist. Uh, he then worked for the United Nations. Uh, interestingly enough, the Baha'i teachings um, uh, ask Baha'is to um, avoid military service, combatant military service, on behalf of their nations but do permit them to be part of uh, a future world uh, police force. So on the face of it, he was using his um, learning and professional skills um, uh, in a, a, a way which is quite compatible, I think, when he became a Baha'i with the, with the Baha'i teachings. Uh, David Kelly himself was not making a political statement. Uh, did not intend to take a position on one side or the other. And uh, to claim, as some people have, that Kelly was part of some sort of a conspiracy to instigate the war is just nonsense. It doesn't agree with any of the facts. Uh, the Baha'i World Center was in the picture, let's say, because we were aware that this was a, a fairly hot subject and controversial and the Baha'i institutions of the United Kingdom cooperated fully with the Hutton Inquiry and uh, all the other inquiries that were going on in parallel. Um, and this was just as a matter of course, as a matter of obedience to government and because the community uh, had no particular ax to grind one way or another in the matter. They were called the Martu, Romeo and Juliet. Forbidden lovers living as exiles in their own country. Sixty years on, their son Yalala embarks on an emotional homecoming to his birthplace in the Gibson Desert. Footprints in the Sand, 8 o'clock tomorrow on SBS. delivers to 261 million places around the world. Signature on delivery in 200 countries, online tracking in over 160 of those. All for one business, yours. Call us today or visit our website. Quit smoking and this is what you're up against. Smoking increases the number of receptors in your brain that thrive on nicotine. Take their supply away, they go mad. They won't let you break the habit without a fight. The therapeutic nicotine and nicotine patches, lozenges and gum reduces nicotine cravings so you can wean the beasts off gradually and help give your willpower a fighting chance to do the rest. Head to the island of inspiration. Jetstar flies to the unparalleled beauty of Launceston and Hobart from Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. And if you're looking for an inspirational fare to Tasmania, you'll find it at jetstar.com. is the last piece that my grandfather wrote. He was, I think, nearing the end, just one year before he died. Illallah ya'mur bil'adli wal-ihsa. God, 
gives rules in mercy and justice. At any point yes. in the history you have with the MSJ, yes. Yes. were you afraid? No. I am only afraid of God. I am not afraid. What can they do? Kill me? God forbid. <laughs> it doesn't reach that point. I'm not afraid. I'm st living here, going to stay living here next door to them. I'm not moving. How far are we right now from the garden? No. Walking distance. I walk there every day. I pass. Neighbors. <laughs> Traveling half the world after Asaf's obsession brought me to the same point where it all started. Still wondering what I was doing there, but curious enough to stay to the end. So this is the International Library. Although we have seen the plans of the buildings, we were not sure what exactly we were looking for. That's the lowest level of the building? Yeah. Okay. That's the first level. As we stepped out of the elevator, the smell of triumph grew bigger. Yeah, there are uh, laundry facilities for the staff. So that's probably what you're smelling as a dryer. Oh well, Triumph must smell like laundry. Now, let's see. I don't think my key card works on this level. Why? I don't know. Because security has their own designations for everything. So we may have to walk up one more level. We have to walk up one more floor. Okay. Let's walk up. Well, it'll get stronger as we get closer to the dining room, which is on four. <laughs> here they also eat uh, here and yeah yeah eat. they'll they'll cook for about 500 people every day every day right. and they're what still clean that's uh, like a custodial closet I think we expected to meet some of the 500 people who just had chicken but hardly met any What's above us? Uh, where are we? Well, I think that's where we were. The yeah, International yeah, Teaching Center. Yeah. I'd have to see a sketch. I don't really know now. This I get to such a ground in these brothers, honestly. There's a book center here for book sales for staff, and then there is a there is a food center to support this kind of program. Yeah, so it's like a little small supermarket. Yeah. There was nothing odd about what we saw that far. We continued. Maybe there is more. There must be. And so we kept on going and going into so the tunnels, which connected all the buildings we have seen on the outside. So we can walk from here towards the UHJ? Yeah. What kind of shelter is there? Uh, bomb shelters. You know, just as they're part of buildings construction, you have to build a bomb shelter. This is the shelter? I haven't been to this one. Looks like part of it's using, being used for storage.
On our way out from the shelter, we have realized that sometimes a bomb shelter is just a bomb shelter. We floated back to surface at the Universal House of Justice, the largest building on the hill. We were standing in what looked like an empty ballroom. Passing the vacuum cleaner, it seemed we have just missed the party. The, uh, the buildings are built with bomb shelters just uh, as required by code and uh, they're built to accommodate the numbers of the people who work in the buildings just as any other building would be built. So that, no, there are no special bomb shelters or any kind of special uh, uh, kinds of uh, needs to accommodate any kind of ap apocalyptic visions or anything like that. We don't really have those. But I see that the problems in the world are to be remedied through active engagement in human society, not in putting aside quantities of food or storing up resources for ourselves or building bomb shelters far in excess of what are required. Disappointed, we walked down the stairs. Asaf, still obsessed, was pointing at the archive building, which they did not let us in. He was thinking about our next move, but I knew that failing to find the Holy Grail, there will be no more us in this quest. Mm -hmm.